So as you can tell, we're down here at the bike shed and we've got Callum from Debolex Engineering to run us through his rather wonderful Ducati 803. So this is the bike that was at the Bike Shed London 2018 show on the Ducati stand. Yep. Talk us through it, it's a stunning piece of kit. Yeah, it's, um, so it's based on uh, Ducati's Scrambler, Scrambler uh, model, the 803. Uh, uh, Scrambler is just a marketing term, there's nothing scrambling about it. It's, no. it's a great trellis frame and a fantastic engine. Exactly, yeah, so for us, when we're, whenever we're choosing a donor bike, we're looking at uh, you know, a good frame, good engine mm. that suits the style of bike that we want to build, and, and uh, a sort of slimline GP style racer, the, the you know, Ducati's L-Twin air cool twin it was um and this frame actually is a really nice base for this style so that's why well, we've covered it all up now i know we have actually we? <laughs> there's some nice looking bits under there but um, uh, joking aside it's a, it's a cracking power plant and it seems an obvious choice especially following on from the 748 that you did yeah a couple of years ago yeah it was, it was a it's it, actually out of all, all the bikes we have worked on not, not mentioning too many brands but the ducati's range have been really nice to work on the quality of everything's been really good the frame design on this is really nice for what we wanted to do with it and the engine's nice and slim sounds great it's yep. it's everything you could want as a base to build this style of bike from so the obvious is all the bodywork but let's let's come to that second yeah component wise is there anything different from the stock bike on this so it's nothing too mad um we we, we kept the single sided sided disc because it was this sort of classic style a little bit and um but we have upgraded suspension we've got the andriani front fork cartridges um, Maxton have done a rear shock for us. Yep. Um, Rizoma have done rear sets, which I think, but I believe, are for a monster model. But we modify them slightly to fit this. Um, and and a, the triple clip clamp is that a fast tech one? Fast tech machine now for us. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're working on design with them to come up with that a nice clean look. Um, uh, Renthal clip ons, I always like. Yeah, they're really mm -hmm. smart. Actually, this is called their Generation Threes, which actually have a, an internal thread, so they. They don't normally on the clip ons, you sometimes see the end of the tube, yeah. whereas they thread into the, the oh, actual nice. clamping part. So, yeah, nice clean nice clip on. British company as well. Yeah, yeah. And nice. I was having a play around earlier, the throttle is. Um, sorry, noisy Harley is <laughs> next door. The, the throttle, I know the, everything, the downside of the, the assembly here is standard, but that feels lovely. It's really, really nice, yeah. isn't it? When we first fitted that, and um, we had to adjust the cable a little bit. Um, to make that work properly and we've got a slight shorter throw on it. Yeah. Um, but actually, yeah, the spring back and the feel of it it's is, is perfect, yeah. And uh, I noticed the electrics have all gone. Yeah. So what have we got left? Um, so we've just got a, a, a your normal kill switch and a cranking button. Yeah. Uh, Akasato do that nice clamping switch that goes straight onto the mast cinder which is a, a nice, neat system and looks very racy. Which and that's not a stock mass cylinder, is it? No, nope, that's, that's Akasato from... again, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, they do a nice, nice clean Italian master cylinder, which is nice. Um, and then we did have an Akasato clutch on it, but we're... Um, we that's just a Dominion. Yeah, went for that, yeah, just for lock issues. That, that, um, that actually works we, nicer. And that was the previous one was fouling on here? Uh, yeah, actually internally, it's quite a long uh, okay. clutch um, perch on the on the Akasata one. So this was a bit bit of a shorter one, so that worked out a bit better. And rubber wise, what are they? Metzler? Yeah, you, you quite like Metzlers. They seem to do most of your builds. Yeah, I tend. To, I've been doing quite a few of the, this race inspired thing, haven't mm. we? So, uh, and their race tech RRs are just uh, yeah, they follow that theme quite nicely, and um, and they seem to perform really and well. The, so. the pipe is your handiwork, isn't it? It is up until the silencer. Um, although we that cut from? that around there. And, uh, and modified the shape of it, actually. Uh, but that's from Kian. From me, sorry? Kian. Okay. Yeah. So they do normally do like a Sport Classic or, or their BMW R100. Well, they're traditional for the BMWs, aren't they? Exactly, yeah. Um, but that's a really nice sign, so yeah. And all of the, the headers yeah, so, are all yeah, work? From the headers, that's all us. Yeah. Um, stainless steel bends, which we, we buy in and then um, fabricate you know, into that sort of shape. It was really tight getting through this frame here. We wanted yeah, a high exhaust. It. We knew we wanted that. And it was like, how are we going to get two pipes from here, yeah. curling up and getting round here, and it was... Um, so you took the air angle grinder to the back of the cylinder? <laughs> we lost a little bit, <laughs> oh yeah. No, it's, um, yeah, that, actually that bend, that radius, really kind of hugged around the frame yeah. quite nicely. And, um, and yeah. that underneath this bodywork, that, I don't know if you can see in there, Dan, that beautiful loop round under there. Yeah. Is that so you can match the header lengths? Because you're quite yeah, so particular we, on that. Yeah, that we, we, yeah, definitely, and that, that works. That's, it's a central part of the bike to put the collector, a, a part of the engine to put the collector, so that works quite nicely. Uh, and then that gave us the perfect sort of area to loop back around and get head up for a yeah. high, high pipe. Um, so now we're down, down this way and my old legs already bent down. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about this bodywork. But one thing I noticed when we're standing back there, obviously you can see the, um, 
the exhaust they're running behind, but I particularly like the, the fact you've gone to them. trouble to. <laughs> yeah, but it's, um, you know, you, you cover it all up, you need to be able to check certain parts of the engine, and obviously the oil level is a important part of that so we um yeah those you know it's, it's the shapes of the engine that really end up molding the the bodywork and yeah. that's why it's got these nice shapes the front bulge there is you know fits around the the, uh, the end of the belt cover there and um and i was lucky enough to see this bike in the various stages of production and seeing the different bits of the um the fairing come together and one of my favorite bits was when you had this intake duct here yeah. on its own before you'd made the rest of it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So obviously it's made, the fairing is in two pieces, right and the left and, and then a nose cone. Yeah. Um, but we did start with making this piece as one and then we decided, and then we cut that at a later date. It was easier to make the fairing uh, sort of as one and split it than to try and make two halves and then make them perfectly join. Um, so and it's yeah. all aluminium, English wheel, yeah. and just set of hammers and exactly, yeah, very a load of time. Basic tools. The English wheel is probably about as complicated a tool as it gets. Not that that's too complicated, but it's um, it is just very much manipulating the metal into the shape that you want with you know strips. Were, were there any cock ups? Are there any bits you had to throw away and start again? Uh, what did we? I was you well, the oil cooler was a was a particularly challenging part. Uh, we've done a few shapes like this, and the, and the process of achieving that shape is very similar. But that's this a stock one, cooler behind there, isn't it? That's it. Yeah, stock cooler. So we slightly modified, moved it in towards the middle of the bike, uh, and then we start with making a frame, a wooden buck actually, to, to sort of beat out this framework. And then we add in this, the, the sections and weld the frame into, and then there's three pieces that are sort of ends up growing. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. for us we look at it, and we're like, God, how are we going to achieve that shape? But once you start with the basic shape, and, and it, it slowly grows. Before you know it's finished and you think oh yeah that looks good so it's um yeah that was it's particularly challenging but then and then the middle middle hole is exactly the same process um except then we cut it down the middle and, and split the fairings off and um, so it's what one two what was it three four bolts to get yeah one, that there's off. one underneath yeah and then there's just one two three underneath there and the nose will come off um so yeah on, on a you probably have quick release fixings on a proper race bike so yeah. you can get to it easier um we like using these pro bar fixes. We like to rub them out yeah, as really well. They're really nice. Yeah, so they're all rubber well, rivnuts. So uh, rivnuts um, rather than a washer behind. And, that's it. Yeah. yeah. So they're all. So they're, they're they're never solidly mounted, which just makes it you know stops any vibration and anything yeah. else. Um, and this looks like it. How many pieces? There's a few made in that. Up yeah. Here. It looks pretty intricate to get that. Those Again, tight it's sort curves. of like you start with it, and it's like, how are we going to do this? But you, once we start with this middle piece, which really sort of starts to take the shape of the bike, we have the two sides. Um, draw on our design for the cutout and then uh, and add this little rebate which sort of just kind of finishes the panel off nicely but it's sort of it's, it's the lines that I think are really important to make sure um, you know you, you get really right because it's sort of that's yeah, what your eye focuses is on at the end isn't compact. it yeah it's very yeah, it's a, it's a, we, did, <laughs> you, we could have gone fatter on it but it is just like a well-fitting suit mm. isn't it it's like a real real um, tight slim line little and racer. the tank that's what Ali as well yeah that's really nice, even the bits you can't see are. Yeah, and it's all painted up, yeah, lovely underneath. And yeah. So that, yeah, that starts with the base as well, and um, we fit the, the electric, yeah, the standard the electric fuel, fuel pump inside. Yeah, we turn up an aluminium boss for that, aluminium boss for the fuel cap, mm -hmm. uh, and a tiny little boss for the breather. They're and that's on. a Rizoma fuel cap? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and that's, um, yeah, they, they make a lovely fuel cap. The, the system and the sealing of it is, is perfect, so Are we you just use that. Key, pop that out. Yeah, so that's just on a quick quarter turn. You push it down. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? It's got a yeah. nice seal. So it's, it, yeah. you know, we make a rubber gasket that sits underneath here. So we, we modify it a little bit, but it's, um, it's perfect for us to, as, a, as a cap for, and it's got a nice classic look. Well, it's nice that you've gone for that, which is a blend of classic and modern without sort of just sticking a Monza cap on top. Or that's something. it, yeah. Just yeah, bit, for me, that's, um, I'm not into, not into the Monza cap. Or, you know, I like, it is a modern bike, and mm. I, don't need to, I don't want to shy away from that too much, although it is retro styled to an extent. But. When you say retro styled, your inspiration came from, what, 1950s, 60s, endurance ra race cars of the time? Yeah, the cars and bikes, like, I mean, Agostini's MV, you know, racer, three cylinder. Yeah. Is yeah, it's a big inspiration on this. Um, but the little uh, GP sort of um, 250 Ducatis that used to be around, and uh, and then there's lots of car inspiration. Mm. Those those shapes, those mouth, those internals for the for the air intakes and things, they come and, from classic cars. And the colour scheme as well, that light blue on the yes, on the red. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. There's a, a 250 LM Ferrari that races in those colours. That was colors said, and, no, 260. Um, yeah. yeah, that so that really inspired that. It was a bit bit touch and go because you know blue on red is not your normal. 
go it, to. It, it could really go badly, couldn't yeah. it? Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. But we, we sat and we, um, we flipped through some colour chips for a while and I'm really pleased with it. I, lo I, love, no, it I love, really like putting a rounder on the front there and, um, and I think it's worked quite nicely. And if anyone starts moaning about, oh, it hasn't got lights, hasn't got this, that's, you know, daytime MOT in this country is perfectly yeah, fine. Yeah, it's so good that we're, we're relaxed with that. And if yeah. you want to build something race inspired, then... Uh, if you want to go around the corner, just stick your arm out. And exactly, yeah, that's it. And the tail as well, that, that's... All aluminium, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a bit of detailing up in the bottom there. That's, um, Fair, that's probably worth you having a <laughs> poke the camera under there, Dan. Is this all stock here, this bracing on the yeah, Ducati we, frame? I was actually going to, we were going to make our own bracing, but when we looked at that, it's, it's such a nice shape. It's just yeah. covered up with plastic normally. What a shame. Um, so we, yeah, we removed some brackets and bits and pieces, but that's really nice. We, put a, we extend the frame from here and we add a few strengtheners in, make our exhaust bracket, which is all rubber mounted. and. Um, and then we, then we make our alley base, and um, from the base we can make, make the, the top shape. And this um, Alcantara seat, that's Des's handiwork on the stitching, yeah. is it? Yeah, that's it, That yeah. looks particularly difficult to get those shapes right. Yeah, it was quite a challenging seat, actually. It's one of probably the less detailed ones we've done, but actually, in terms of difficulty, it was quite challenging. Um, and is it your usual yeah, super neat and tidy underneath? That's it, so the standard catch is on there, and um, just flick of the key, and, and uh, yeah, the details in the seat there. We, we spend a lot of time trying to um, sort of finish just underneath the seat off as, as best yep. we can. Alley or steel? That's steel, yeah. Right. We, we do that and just, add, just beating the, the pressings there just to add to the strength. Um, it's quite a thin gauge and then uh, just a single pin. And, um, and everything else on the bike sort of from a manufacturing point of view is standard. So if the, the, the uh, next owner of the bike wants to get it serviced or it's yep. everything's still under warranty? Yeah, it could go. Yeah, we, we actually work with our local dealer to. Um, to make sure that you know the warranty stands with these, and uh, and they can go in and, and have their service and everything else with mm -hmm. as a, a normal Ducati would. I like this. Yeah, it's, it's just those extra little details that um, kind of add to the race theme of it and, and keep it nice and lightweight. Um, again, Pro Bolt we use um, quite often on there, just finishes it off quite nicely, and we matte black all the inside of our panels just to give it a nice nice finish. That's an aluminium electrics box we fit in there as well. That's pretty slim, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty slim. We should have gone a bit where, bigger. Where, really. are we for, where are we for battery on this? Uh, under the swing arm. Right. So it's Is got, that in something you, you made up a little bracket? Yeah, yeah made a little, um, a little steel, steel uh, battery box there, lithium Shore I one. Um, so that fitted quite neatly under there. It wasn't loads of room. Made this extra brace here that just the battery hangs on. Oh, yeah. Uh, and again, that's all rubber mounted, so that's not um, no vibration issues there. A nice um, little um, fabric fastener rather than a cable tie. That's it, yeah. Very we like nice. that. Actually, that for a, just a bolt on that from Rizoma is pretty tight, isn't it? It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, we were actually going to we were going to do a sandblast and, and clear anodized finish to match the wheels, but actually, I think it looks quite nice. Yeah, it looks it's quite um, nice. That sort of yeah, Rizoma, Rizoma do such you know such great stuff. It's um, some some areas like the fuel cap rear sets. You know, it seems silly for us to start designing our own when off the shelf that they do some great stuff. So and rental chain and sprockets. So have you gone up or down on the gearing? Was that standard? Um, we have gone yeah down on the gearing. Um, and that, yeah, it's, um, let's improve that a bit. Um, and you mentioned on the wheels that you, you vapour blast the rims and then have them clear anodised. Uh, we, we sandblast, sandblast them. We quite right. heavily sandblast them, so we get that kind of old school yeah, uh, so sort of sandblast, uh, yeah. cast look, sorry. Uh, and then a clear anodise gives it a nice smooth finish. Stainless steel spokes. Um, yes, yeah, so that was the same as our Thruxton, actually. Had that, that similar look. Yeah. Um, and did you install the chicken strips especially on, on these tyres? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, so aside, you have, we have got some really nice footage of you riding around Goodwood, but yeah. I can imagine when uh, you've, you've... Was it Lyndon Hill? Oh, was it, yeah, the Thruxton. Yeah, yeah, this is, so the Cafe Racer Cup, didn't we? Ah, uh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean, literally, after I'd spent the morning uh, on, the, on the standard scrambler Cafe Racer, mm. um, but then to get on this... Um, I bet you were a bit nervous, weren't you? I was nervous because... Think you, you might drop it? Yeah, or? it was a few parade laps and... And I'd had a great morning and really pushed the, the, the standard cafe racer pretty hard and I was mm. feeling really comfortable on it. And going out on this, I just knew that I needed to do a few laps. It was a bit of a demo, and, um, but I, was, I so wanted to stay out there and just keep pushing harder and harder, harder. But with, um, yeah, we, we were looking actually at the time just to sell the bike, so it was best to keep it in, in one piece. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it really did, the exhaust note was so addictive and, um, and it felt really great. So. Yeah. Um, Can we go and have a listen to that now? Definitely, yeah, yeah. let's do it. So I'll be your pit bitch then. Thank you very much. You're good at that. Yeah. Can I fire it up this time? Have yourself. Uh -huh. Red button in. Red, red button. Yeah, that's a, that's a push that and then do the black one. 
That's relatively sensible on the idle, isn't it? Nice, isn't it? Yeah. It starts up nice and quick. It doesn't sound all hollow and leery. I mean, some people are building these all straight through systems. Yeah. It's good, yeah, it's got, it's got uh, sort of beat to it, isn't it? Yeah. Um, now, you did warm this up earlier, so we can give it a little... That's it. I'll let you do it, it's your bike. <laughs> it's supposed to end with that, not start with it. Just keeps touching me down. <laughs>